and thank you everyone for joining. My name is Taimur Ghafur and I'm one of the accountants in Awesome UK. I mainly look after the e-commerce clients and help with the automation of bookkeeping and accounting in terms of e-commerce. As we all know, the Brexit is almost here and our focus is to ensure that we all still compliant, necessary paperwork is in place and to continue trading and growing our e-commerce business. Now, one of the areas that is drastically changing is VAT and the import and export side of things, especially in the UK. And my main aim today is to help you understand these changes and to prepare for it. Now, before we jump into the complexity, um, I will quickly just go through the basics of what VAT is and what it means for your business. Um, now, most of you are already an e-commerce business and you know you've been dealing with VAT, but just to give you a quick heads up and what VAT actually means and where it uh, works out to be on your business side of things. So VAT is value added tax. It's a consumption tax that the end consumer pays on consuming any services and goods. Um, now, and depending on the type of service and products you're providing, you charge either 20%, 5% or zero rate VAT in UK to your customers. You collect that money and return it to HMRC. So all that means is you're collecting VAT uh, as a form of tax on behalf of the government and paying it back to them. Now, some rates uh, state that 20% covers majority of the goods and services, where 5% are thing, uh, things on children's car seats and home energy products, uh, just for example, and zero rated items are mainly food and children clothing stuff. Now, what it means in terms of the actual calcula calculation itself and how it works. So I have a very basic example here. And let's say we keep it simple. You have a UK supplier, you have your UK e-commerce uh, e business and you have UK customers. So what you uh, tend to do is you get products from your UK suppliers in your business and you pay the money to them for that. And let's say you receive an invoice from them saying seven pound 20. Now that's seven pound 20 uh, says six pounds plus VAT. So it means that one pound 20 is the VAT element that you have paid to your supplier. Now on the other side, when you sell that item to your customers, you pay 10, uh, you ask them for 10 pounds plus VAT, a total of 12 pounds. You're collecting that two pounds extra from for HMRC and recording the 10 pounds as your sales. The amount that is VAT uh, due to the HMRC back that you need to pay is 80 pence. That's the difference of what you collected and what you paid. Uh, so the difference between input VAT and output VAT. And that ADP is what you need to pay back to HMRC by the end of your period. Um, so why is that an uh, important element for e-commerce businesses? Um, there are uh, slightly more complicated uh, scenarios and elements that uh, are enforced in e-commerce business itself. And some of the common issues um, that I could think of is if you're selling on eBay, for example, um, the fees that eBay charges you to sell on their platform is a vatable fees because e-commerce uh, eBay is a VAT registered business in UK. Therefore, you claim the money back on the VAT that you pay on their fees. Amazon, however, is slightly different. Um, Amazon is not a UK registered uh, VAT registered business, um, and the way that works is. If you pay them, uh, if you provide them with the VAT registration number, uh, they will stop charging you VAT on the fees because, because it's covered under the reverse charge. Again, that's a separate topic. But if you don't have a, a VAT number and you don't provide them VAT number, they will charge you VAT on their invoices. You can claim that money back again through the input system that I mentioned, but um, you need a VAT invoice from Amazon. So you can see uh, both uh, somewhat similar type of uh, platforms, but the way VAT is treated is different. Again, um, you will see further down, the, given the new rules, um, Amazon will start charging the VAT similar to eBay because they're now obliged to register in UK for VAT purposes. But the point is to tell you how VAT can be difficult and different on different platforms in different areas. And if you're selling in both, then you need to treat it differently. One uh, last example I have on this is uh, shipment services. So on e-commerce, you normally charge for your products, but you also charge for the shipping uh, fees. So you normally keep a bit of a commission on it or you don't, um, but what you charge to customer, because it's a sale for you, you still need to charge them VAT. And normally people just say it's standard 20% VAT, but the actual rule is you follow what, the exact rates of what you're selling. So if you're selling a product of 5% VAT, you charge 5% on shipment. If you're doing a zero rate, uh, then you do zero rate. And if you're doing a mix with a bundle, then you divide the proportion of shipment on the same uh, proportion of your uh, product that you're selling. 
So it, it becomes slightly more complicated for e-commerce business. And that's why you need to be on top of VAT to make sure that you're VAT compliant and you're not losing out money on different fees and you know, shipment costs and stuff like that. 